Hello everyone, uh, welcome back. I hope everyone's doing well. I do have my reading wrap up for April and I did manage to finish five books. Uh, I did include um, a sixth book because I was like three quarters of the way through it and I finished up in the first couple of days of May so I figured out I'll just include it. So the first book I read was A Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter by Theodora Goss, and I'm hoping to pick up the other two uh, when I find it for a decent price. <laughs> um, this one takes place in the late 1800s, and the main character is uh, Mary Jekyll, who is the daughter of uh, Dr. Jekyll. And uh, she, her father has just passed away, and uh, she does not have a lot of money left. She's not sure what to do. And then she finds out that um, Mr. Hyde uh, is has escaped, I think he's escaped prison or confinement. And there is a reward for his capture. So she decides to try to kind of hunt him down to get the reward money. And along the way she meets um, different characters who are the daughters of uh, scientists also. So she meets uh, Beatrice Rappaccini. Um, I did have to read a little bit about it. I guess her father um, had a, like a poisonous garden and uh, was injecting or feeding her poisonous plants, which she became immune to. So if anyone touches her or goes near her, uh, they end up dying in that. Um, there's Catherine Mar Moreau and her father was Dr. Moreau, who um, would... Uh, kind of combine uh, animals and humans and on this island. And there's Justine Frankenstein. Anyway, they all get together and uh, they just, they figure out that um, they've, they're all these women who have been experimented on by their fathers and with devastating results and uh, they want to put an end to this. And there is a society of alchemists. So they want to try to track down the society and put an end to all these um, experimentations and that. So uh, I've really enjoyed this book. It was a, it was a really fun read and um, I'm hoping to pick up the, the other two at some point. And this is A Serpent's Tale by Ariana Franklin. And this is the second book in the um, uh, Mistress of the Art of Death series and this takes place in the 12th century and in the first book uh, Adelia is the main character and she is um, uh, she studied uh, medicine in Salerno Italy and uh, I did read about it. it's quite fascinating it's probably the only place in the world at the time who allowed women to study uh, medicine and she was called to England uh, by King Henry II to figure out all these murders in this um, village of these children uh, which she did do and this uh, takes place about a year later and Adelia um, I thought she was going back to Salerno but <laughs> she stayed around and she had an affair with this um, fellow and she had a uh, child by him and the child's just uh, like eight months old in this particular book and uh, the fellow she had an affair with is now like a bishop in that uh, but uh, King Henry II's mistress um, he probably had quite a few by the sounds of it um, was uh, poisoned and the first suspect is Queen Eleanor King Henry II's estranged wife so King Henry calls in Adelia to solve the, um, the murder. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of twists and turns. There's not just the one murder. There's other murders that are related to the mistress's uh, murder. And uh, she knows there's a lot on the line because uh, there is a civil war brewing between King Henry II's supporters and Queen Eleanor's uh, supporters. So yeah, there's just... Um, I, I just love history, especially the medieval times. And uh, you learn uh, a lot about uh, everyday life in the 12th century. Uh, she's a very, very intelligent woman. I really like this character. She's, a, she's pretty feisty. And um, uh, it was just a lot of twists and turns and uh, I just kind of a page turner for me. Uh, there were some slow parts, uh, but I, I really enjoy this series. I think there's three more in the series, which I was able to find at a used bookstore, actually.
And this is the Janice Stone by Ellie Griffiths, and this is a Ruth Galloway uh, mystery. This is the second book in the series, and Ruth Galloway is a forensic archaeologist who assists the police uh, when they f uncover bones. Um, she helps date the bones and find out how that person was murdered, um, etc., like that. Um, so I don't want to say too much. I might give it away, but there's um, a lot of personal stuff happening in her life um, that uh, kind of expands with this particular story. And uh, there is a site in Norwich um, where they undig or uncover um, a Roman village in that, and they find some bones in there. And then in a mansion, um, not too far away they're uh have leveled the mansion and they're going to put new apartments up there and they find this child buried just underneath uh, the doorway and a lot of romans actually would bury their children or um, uh, make sacrifices in that and uh, put these sacrifices under the walls of a building for good luck or something. Anyway, it's, it's outlined in here anyhow. Um, but it's a Roman tradition, I guess, anyhow. Um, but anyway, there, um, yeah, I just, I really like her character and the police officer that she uh, deals with. And um, yeah, find out a little bit about um, the history. You find out some science and uh, there's mystery sort of all rolled into one which I really do like so I'm enjoying this series and this is at the sign of the star and uh, I found this in a thrift store and it's a um, YA fiction or middle grade fiction I don't know but I, I actually kind of enjoyed it and this takes place um, Oh, 1677 it takes place, or yeah, I love my history. So this young girl is, um, she doesn't, her mother passed away when she was quite young, and she's the only child, and her father is a fairly successful bookseller. He is fairly well off, and she is really fascinated by books. Uh, she um, loves the idea of taking over her father's uh, bookstore, and meeting all these authors and going to the plays by all these authors and uh, she's really looking forward to kind of inheriting um, his business and that way she doesn't kind of have to settle for just whoever comes along to marry she'll have a lot more choice of who she can marry if she um, is running this books shop and that sort of thing and then her father ends up remarrying and um, She's uh, quite upset because she figures if there, uh, if there is a boy that is born, he's going to inherit everything. And she's kind of devastated that um, uh, she that kind of that chance for her has just gone away in that. So the stepmother and her do not get along at all because she just she really treats her stepmother quite horribly because. Um, she thinks because of this remarriage she's, she's just going to lose everything and she won't have much of a future and she won't be able to do what she really truly wants to do so um yeah it was actually uh pretty good um a lot about relationships and uh, what little choice uh, women back then had and uh yeah I, I actually really enjoyed that one for being like a kind of middle grade uh, this one is this, this Census Taker by China Myville. Yeah, this was an odd kind of book. <laughs> um, I did get through it, though. Uh, so, it never really specifically says, but it sounds like a kind of a dystopian society. We don't know what's really happening outside of this village. Um, but, uh, yeah, just... It sounds like people are kind of scrambling to survive in that, so it sounds kind of maybe post 
apocalyptic or dystopian. I'm not really sure. They never really specify. This young boy lives with his uh, parents up on top of this hill. There's other people living on the hill, but they kind of keep to themselves. They go into town once in a while. But his father is quite a bizarre character, and um, uh, he does some very awful things to animals. Um, and uh, one day his uh, mother uh, disappears, and he figures that his father probably murdered his mother. And um, you kind of go back and forth from the present to the past. Most of it's in the past when all this is happening. But um, some of the people in the village do try to help the young boy, especially um, there's a group of kids about his age that um, are orphaned and they're kind of living on their own. I It's just, I don't know. <laughs> it was, it was interesting. I, I kind of finished it and I said okay right all right I don't I don't know it I I just I finished it that's all I can say and then this is Ink and Bone by Rachel Kane and this is the first book in a series and I think this is kind of young adult too but I really really like this one I did order some, some more of the books in the series uh, so this takes place in an alternate, um, well, it, it starts off in London, but it's kind of an alternate world. Uh, it doesn't really specifically say if it's in the present or the past. I think at one point, 2025 was mentioned, but it's it's very steampunk. Um, it feels very kind of Victorian steampunk that sort of time uh they have um they don't i mean they don't have cell phones or cars or anything but they have all these steam powered um carriages and they have um auto maidens uh like um kind of steel lions that are um kind of protecting the library and that sort of thing. So it's just kind of an alternate kind of society, I guess. And uh, only the very elite are picked uh, to attend this um, Alexand Alexandrian library, which in our world has disappeared, unfortunately. But in this world, the Alexandria library still exists. So people have to go through rigorous training to become a librarian and to become part of this Alexandria uh, library. No one's allowed to physically own a book. Um, they have these little codexes, or it sounds like an iPad. They have these little codexes where they can read books from the library, but they can't physically own books. And um, yeah, I really, really like the characters. I know that's kind of a weird summary. But there's just it's so much going on with this book. It's hard to fit everything in. It's just, um, I really, really like the characters in this book. Um, it's very complex characterizations. Um, there's a lot of um, adventure. There's a lot of death. Uh, just how people cope with what's happening. People want to change the library. The library is extremely powerful. They basically kind of rule the world because they have all the um, control of all the knowledge of the world. And it's just it's just very complex. Um, but I really, really enjoyed this. So I'm really looking forward to uh, reading the other books. But I know that's kind of a vague, weird summary, but it's just a lot going on with the book. And then I'm just um, not too far into this one. This is Jane Harper. I think this is my first Jane Harper. And this is uh, The Survivors. And I think it takes place in Australia. And something happened to this um, gentleman about 12 years ago when he was 18. He's 30 now. And he returns to his hometown. And something's happened in the past. Um, uh, sounds like there was um, a couple of deaths and he was uh, involved. Uh, they just haven't specified it yet. I'm not too far into it, but um, so far, so good. So that's it. Um, yeah, it wasn't the best reading one. Certainly, 
Uh, there's a couple that were uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, a couple of them were hit. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Um, take care. Uh, give your loved ones a hug and kiss. And we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.